So, uh, there you go. Keep commenting and doing stuff. I don't know what to play today because I really, I just got the guitar. I wanted to try something else. <laughs>
it is. You're like, is he trying to play? No, I wasn't. So, uh, okay, quick story, quick story, quick story, quick, 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 quick. What were we talking about? Chicks, we're talking about dr guys, stupid people, girls, 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 Tony Iommi. Who, uh, well, there is another story. And it's funny because I knew what was going to happen because I heard this story from Nikki. Okay, so there's this girl guitar player. And uh, she's dated and married a few people. And actually, I talked about her. I was at the Rainbow, sitting there drinking. She walks in, sits down next to me. She's like, "Who are you?" I'm like, "I'm Michael D. What band are you in?" I go, I, "Nothing right now. I'm putting something together." Because this was like 1980. Five, six, can't remember. But, you know, whatever. So, this girl was rehearsing, and her drummer at that time was actually Eric Singer. I'm trying to not say her name. I don't know why. But, uh, I just don't want to. But you'll figure it out. Just say, you know. It's, she's, you know, blonde. She was big. Kind of, she was big in the 80s. She's still big, but she's just older. And uh, blonde hair. Uh, you know who she is. Okay, so. Sit down next and we start talking. I'm drinking beer. And uh, she's, you know, puts something in her mouth and then she leans over and kisses me. And it's a lewd. And I'm like, oh, okay. So, okay, finished drinking beer, and she's like, so what are you doing? I'm like, well, I don't know, what are you doing? She goes, oh, uh, I don't know, I guess uh, I'd go home. I go, okay. So, she starts to go to her house, and she goes, you know what? Where do you live? I said, I, Burbank. She goes, that's where I'm rehearsing. Would you like to see the rehearsal studio? I'm like, sure. So we go. And things happen. And she goes, you want me to give you a ride home? And I'm like, well, what time are you rehearsing? And she goes, oh, I'll be here at like 10, 10 or 11. I'm like, oh, you're kidding me. I go, there's beer in the refrigerator still, right? She goes, yeah. I go, I could stay here. And then she goes, well, you got a shower. I go, and she's like, well, there's a shower here. And I'm like, oh, well, okay. See you tomorrow. I didn't know what I was doing. So I, I stayed there all night. There was drums, guitars, amps, everything. I played everything. I'm sitting there alone. She comes back. I don't know why she trusted me. And uh, I watched them rehearse. And uh, she was rehearsing this new song that she was getting ready to do with a singer. And uh, really, pretty good guitar player. I mean, I didn't think she was that good. See, I'm, I'm going to see if I can not say her name through the whole thing and you can guess who it is. Who, If anybody's listening. I played that Schecter and I just made weird noises for a half hour. I know, buddy! I get like 30 views. You should have, just the Schecter alone. You make noises like that. It's not easy to manipulate that guitar. Okay, so anyways, the next day, I'm showered, ready. I look, I look great, anyways. And uh, she comes in. I watch her rehearse. She's wearing dolphin shorts at all. I'm just thinking, oh my gosh, look at those freaking dolphins. You kick her leg in there, and I'm like, I can't do all it. So the band leaves, and then, and then she takes me home. That was it. Never saw her again. I mean, like that. We'd run into each other, and she'd go, oh, hi, babe. Hi, how you doing? How you? Cool. I like girls like that. That also happened when I was in Pasadena. I went to this party or something at a club, not a club, a bar in old Pasadena, or Pasadena, you know, in Colorado. 
if you know what Pasadena is in California on car. Okay, so I'm sitting there. And there's this girl sitting at another table with like four other girls. And she's looking at me. This freaking chick is hot. And I'm looking at her. I mean, this is like 90... About when I had that picture, 93. Yeah, because my hair was back to being blonde. Which looks right on me. I don't have facial for black hair, so that looks stupid when I had to dye my hair all the time. So I just bought a wig. Anyways... I keep looking at this chick, and she's looking at me, and I'm looking at her. You looking at me, looking at you. Uh, do I know that song? No, I don't. Um, so, she comes over, and she goes, today's my birthday. I'm like, really? Well, happy birthday. She goes, you know what I want more than anything? I go, I have no idea. She goes, you. I'm like, really? And then she sits on my lap. And what's weird is that my old girlfriend is at the bar watching. And I'm like, eh, well, you're old now, so this is what happens. You lose Michael, and he's up for anything. So, and it happens all the time, happened all the time, let's say. Now it's different. I'm older. I, the way girls, like a girl today at the doctor's office was trying to get my phone number I gave it to her but uh, she made cakes or something she had a, her own bakery and it was funny because she you know looked really good she said she lost a hundred pounds and all this crap and but when she started making these cakes she got so sick of sugar that she just stopped eating it and she lost all the weight da, da, da. I go so did you did you have this surgery and she's like well no but I had to have some you know stuff tucked and everything. I look fine. I go, yeah, you, you, you look great. It's probably, I don't know how old she is. Close to my age, I'm sure. So, uh, oh, good. So the Pasadena girl, that's it. That My birthday, her birthday present was me. And I had nowhere to go because I had my girl, I was living out in Whittier with Pi, the crazy girl. Couldn't go there. I go, the only place I got is back at my parents where we rehearse. Or we're band. Yeah, because I was still rehearsing with the blizzard uh, that Randy Rose to She goes, that's fine. I go, okay. Went back because I had one of those fold out bed couch things. Came back there and gave her her birthday present. That was cool. She was hot. And then the next day when I. <laughs> I just thinking, like. I like that so much that, that you know, they, they're like, they come up and they ask, they tell you what you want. Because that's the way it was in the 80s. It, it, people are making it sound like guys were just animals and attacking girls. No, the girls were ta attacking us, at least me. I never went up to a girl and said, hey, except for my wife, my first wife, I kind of approached her, but that's after two years of her chasing me around. And then finally I thought she was old enough, but she still was really young. She was 16. Just turned 16. But anyway, so... Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I never go up to... They always came to me. Always, 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 always. Even my last wife, she came up to me and asked, me to dance and da 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 da. I never go up to anybody. There was one girl, that one girl I think I told you about, her name is Candy. Everybody knows her. And she had a header piece. But she got it sometime after she was with me. I mean, because she, I think she got it from Ricky Rocket. Because, yeah, pretty sure. And it was so weird, that was, I was going to wrap this into the last story, was, so it was, this chick is an Amazon. She was like 6'1", gorgeous. She looked like she was, you know, in her 20s. And I'd been dating, you know, whatever. We'd been seeing each other every day and night for like two weeks. And then I started getting kind of sick of her, because she's here all the time. Or wherever I was. So... 
I started like, well, I got stuff, you know, I got to do this, I got to do that, you know. And then finally, I just blew her off. Oh, no, this is what happened. I said, how old are you? Because we were going to go to eat. And they carded me. And I, they carded her. She goes, she's too young. I go, really? How old are you? And the guy's like, you don't know how old she is? I go, no. You better find out right now, buddy. I'm like, you better find out right now. Here, give me that. 16! And I was like 22. I'm like, you could have told me. She goes, why? What difference does it make? I go, it's statutory rape. That's what difference it makes. I go, okay, I'm going to take you home right now. And I took her home. I think she lived over in Canoga Park or something. Anyways, she ends up becoming friends with my first wife. And she starts talking about this glass guy she was dating. And as she's explaining things, my wife, first wife, was going, what's his name? And she said, oh, Michael. Michael what? Well, he's Michael D. And she's like, that's my, that's my husband. She goes, what? You're married? Well, we're married, but we're separated. But yeah, that's my husband. Okay, well, I, enough with the stories then. I don't want to hear what you guys did. And that was weird. So then she calls me. She goes, you never guess who's here. I go, I have no idea. She goes, Candy. I'm like, unbelievable. Why is she there? I go, get rid of her. Kick her out of the house. She goes, no, I can't do that because she's friends with one of her friends. I'm like, this is so stupid. How could this happen? Out of all the girls in the world, they meet. Whatever. So... It, it didn't last long. It was like two weeks, and they booted her out because she's nuts. But she's so freaking beautiful. I wonder what happened to her. She probably looks like an old hag now. <laughs> but uh, there was a something, a conclusion there. Oh, well, the chick that came up to me at the bar in Pasadena, where I was her birthday present. So I took her home. She gave me a kiss, and she goes, thank you for a very nice uh, birthday. That's the best birthday present I ever had. In fact, I think you gave me about six of them. I'm like, really? Well, you're welcome. She got out of the car, shook my hand, and then 